Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Broken Wing Racing League GT3 Championship. This is the final round, round seven of this uh, championship in this league. We're here at the Nordschleife, We're on board with Kyle Aiken. Everyone's out on their outlap on, uh, for the qualifying session. We are going to be going to... the. Actually, we're going to be on board with this uh, qualifying for 30 minutes. And then on to a 45-minute race. Uh, I'd say the name of the game is, if I was going to channel my inner Will Buxton, is to keep your car on the track. What we saw in practice was a lot of, a lot of chances going for the extra gold there on some of these apexes. But you really shouldn't do that. Best case scenario is to take in a banker lap. And also not break your car on the outlap. It's about a 6 minute and 33 second uh, lap here around Nordschleife. We're not using the GP layout. Um, so they'll just be going into that tight left right. And then very quick entry into the pit lane and if you're not going to the pits it's that sharp right hander and to the very small start trade finish and then back onto the north life cutting out the gp track entirely now while we're on board with noah hoskinson we are going to be just taking it easy see what happens on track we're going to be looking at anybody who makes a little bit of a slip up and that's what the focus on crashes is all about. Is if anyone's going to risk their first outlap as they'll have roughly four, three laps of chancing to go. Maybe four if they're lucky. Um, but yeah, that's where we're going to be at. And so we're just going to kind of gonna leave it open right now. And I'll be right back. Oh, wow. And it looks like Noah's just really keeping it along here as we uh, peer to a screen where this TV... That cameraman definitely is going to get fired for that one. Interesting. With a very open track here on this outlap, <clears throat> it would be almost beneficial for you to do exactly what these two drivers are doing, Eddie Layton and Noah Hodgkinson. They're just keeping in each other's pace here. Well, it's more like Noah keeping up to pace with Eddie Layton here. But not leaving a whole lot up for a room error. You definitely want to start your qualifying with a good gap um, from another driver. But it looks like Noah's just going to stay in the toe. It's going to be impressive for a an end result lap. But he could be held up from this driver when he goes to start his flyer. It is... 
anybody's guess as to why he's des deciding to not build a gap for his ultimate map. A part of me wants to to say, like, it's really strange that everybody has been very cautious on their outlap. Qualifying has settled a lot of the uh, the nerves that some of these drivers have had in practice, because in practice, I would say there was at least a car off at every corner, and there's over 130 corners. I think there's it's more than that, but I forget exactly. Now we have Eddie Layton on board with him. See what he's going to accomplish here. And into the final couple corners we go. This is where it's really tricky. The start of this race is going to start on a rolling start from here. Maybe it's a standing start. I'm not entirely sure. But it's just a really tiny kink to be... Hopefully it doesn't get too... Uh, Egregious as Andrew Korostecki uh, right there is uh, right ahead by 2.6 seconds. I don't think it's going to be much of a bother for Eddie Layton, but you definitely always want to have yourself a little bit of a gap. Noah Hoskinson did not build a gap. He's sitting there 1.1 seconds back to Eddie Layton. And when a car is not likely, but inevitably when a car goes off in front of you it could seriously mess up your chances to getting a good qualifying lap in we're probably going to be seeing drivers going in the 633 range possibly faster than that maybe 623 so i'm not entirely sure i forgot exactly who went what on the timing charts in practice but maybe we could take a look real quick Bolts in practice was a a 652, 639, a 633 by Matt Shack. But I think we're going to be seeing times in that range. Maybe nobody better than Matt there, but only time will tell. He is leading the championship and more than likely is going to finish off this season finale of this league for that championship. I think he's already got it on points. This is more of a formality for him just going through this last race. But who knows? And look at that. Andrew Korsecki's caught up to him. And that is really the point where I would say you hope it. he's not on an outlap. And you hope that Eddie Layton isn't severely hampered by a driver in front of him. And it's not that difficult to build a gap as, you know, we have over 20 plus drivers on the grid. Uh, shouldn't feel like you have to be right on the back end of anybody. Especially on your first time lap. And it's hard to say if this is actually causing uh, Eddie any problems, but as it stands, I think it is. Uh, on the average pace, Andrew uh, Korostecki is actually going up, which means his time is not going... He's not cutting the time down in these corners. It's actually increasing from his base pace previously. But uh, Eddie Layton is definitely losing a bit of time here. How, how much it's uncertain until we get across the line... And then he goes again, because then there would be that comparison to an actual time to lap. And the other factor is that he's got to push to cross the line, so he can't even build the gap for the next lap he does. He's just got to hope that Andrew maybe lets him by on the straight, if that is indeed the case going to happen. We have this little train forming here. 
with three drivers unnecessarily next to each other in qualifying. Might create a decent lap for a driver who might be just holding on to the back of another car, but it's hard to say who is doing that for that reason. definitely hold a tighter line here maybe on the on the straight we'll see what Eddie is planning on doing and to my knowledge no one's crashed out yet from their outlap Which is very bizarre. You know, separated by zero tenths now. Just nothing is really one tenth to here and there, but there goes Andrew Corsecki off into the wall. And Eddie Lane opens up. No Hoskinson is right behind him. In the draft. Is he gonna try to make a move? This is qualifying. It would be something else if he does end up doing that. This isn't the race, and he is side-by-side side with Eddie Layton. And Andrew Corsecki's going to have to definitely abort that lap. Track limits, and he's going to have to go again. Noah tucks right back in, so maybe he wasn't trying to pass him, but just stick with this driver. And Eddie Layton, I think, is going to be the first driver across the line. So actually, third driver across the line. Because we have two drivers that have just crossed. Um, Eddie Layton goes in the pits. Matt Check also in the pits. Does a 6.34.3. Trey Mistak does a 6.35.1. Noah Hoskinson did a 38.6. Eddie Layton did a 39.2. Kyle Aiken... Does a uh, goes P6 with a 6.43. Joshua Willis goes in at P3 with a 6.37. And Andrew Korostecki did a 6.05 last, which is extremely great, but it was all off track limits. That's kind of what happens there. Uh, doesn't really count his whole lap. Miller <clears throat> Durajo. 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 Goes P7 with the 645. <clears throat> and he's going back out on an outlap. It's not definitely advisable, but maybe he didn't have enough fuel to run again. That's interesting there. Uh, Eric Rodriguez is in an outlap. Angel Hernandez is in an outlap. Bodie Wassum is not on an outlap. Uh, White Roberts crossed the line here. In his anime waifu livery, car number 42 of White Roberts goes P4 with a 638-2. That is definitely his waifu. And part of the Pro Series, Cody Wassum. You see that P next to their name? It stands for them in the pros. So we have a pro and amateur class of drivers. Championships split between the two. So drivers, some have a 
what have a chance to finish on the top step in their division. Odie Wassum, uh, in car number 188, is flying around the track, and he's got a little bit further to go before he gets to claim his top step there. If he can manage that, let's go on to... He's on the straightaway. Getting closer to that line. Actually, it goes right there. We can see it. You got a 612 out of him down the sh main straight. Or the back straight, as it is. And he's got about 15 seconds here. See if he can't overtake the uh, P1. And it's a 630 right here. So he's definitely not going to beat out Matt Shack for 634. 635, still going up there. 637. 636. And he goes P3 with a 636.8. Only down by a gap of 2.5 from Matt Shack. Take Shack back. And back out there, we have Craig Carroll in the pits. Outlaw Langer not around just yet. Scott Neiman not also racing yet. Andrew Pickerel not also racing yet. And nothing from the other drivers. Oh. Uh, on an outlap, Steve McAllister goes across the line. And he goes P10. With 655. Detour to the left and right. It's definitely a good detour. Nicholas Matcham in the pits. Andrew Pickrell is on an outlap here. And not much to see there. Eric Rodriguez is still in that outlap. Andrew Gorstecki is still in that outlap. Hmm. Now that is interesting. Focus on crashes, and Eddie Layton is not the driver that crashed. It was Andrew Gorstecki ahead of him that made the move off track. I'm not sure why they would say such a thing to this driver. iRacing has some telemetry data that suggests that he might cause the big one for himself. But as it stands, Eddie Layton is P7. And Scott Neiman is on a flyer, as it is. And we have a little under 10 minutes left to go here on uh, qualifying. Because we're still on board with Scott Neiman, who hasn't put a lap down. But his outlap was a 645, which is pretty good. That would at least put him into the top 10. He was able to keep that up. 
What's going on in the cockpit? Do we have a data? Nothing on his data, on his HUD there. It's unfortunate. He is down the straightaway with a few corners to go. Scott Neiman, one of the drivers who hasn't set a time, could put himself in the top 10 with a lot of other drivers still opting to not uh, do an outlap or even just practice. Oh, as he goes across the line, he goes to P10 with a 6.45.3. Beats out. Steve McAllister. Eric Rodriguez. Other drivers still going for it. Andrew Corsecki. Stecky, as I should say, is also going for it. Hard to say where he's at, though. White Roberts. <clears throat> crosses the line again. Goes P3 for the 636. Anytime. Great. Thanks. And just trying to hop back on board. We got Eric Rodriguez and Angel Corsecki. They're not in the same car, but they're on the same team. I find that to be a little a foul. Uh, drivers of the same team should be in the same car. That should be a rule, but uh, it's not. And so we got ourselves a Ferrari of Andrew Corsecki, Stecky, and uh, Eric Rodriguez in the Porsche. I have been pondering the question of whether or not they were a team for quite some time as they had the same livery, but not the same car. And I was confirmed by Andrew that they are part of the same team. It's a little tidbit. I don't know what the team name is. Probably Prosciutto. It does say that on the, the spoiler there. Or if that's not Prosciutto, I don't know how to read. Craig Carroll still in the pits. And Angel Hernandez not in the pits. On and out. Uh, on his top first time lap from him. And is actually both of these drivers of Andrew and Eric that have yet to set a time but they're both I'm going to push lap and it looks like Andrew here is about to hit one of the carousels on the first one so he's got a little bit to go I hardly remember every corner in this uh, on this track, but I do kind of gauge where I'm at on the track by which carousel I've gone through. The first one or the second one? The second one lets me know I'm a little bit closer to crossing the line. Not really, but just a little closer. Building my way up the mountain after the first one. And trying to take a look and see where Eric's at in that regard as well. As shrubbery looks the same around most of these corners. And that is not the first RV I've seen. But a lot of people are uh, trying to watch this from the comfort of their own trailer. <clears throat> And Andrew Pickroll, another driver who's not set a lap yet, but he looks like he's going down the mountain slightly. Nope, he is not going... I mean, he's going down, but this is towards the start. If I'm not mistaken. I need to classify this as a sector. It'd still be in sector one, I think.
it's tough to say who's in front here. Is this... Car number 46 is ahead, Andrew Koroseki. Well, enjoy the long stretch. And first time by on his first push lap, he uh, had a little accident. But he was able to get out of the way uh, by making friends with the wall and let two other drivers by. So that was uh, good on Andrew for not impeding their qualifying session, but and stops to just return to pits and start over. It's unfortunate where it happened, too, because almost a lot like the lap was all but done. And as he's about to cross the line there, Andrew Korostecki puts himself into P9 with a 641.338. And his teammate, Eric Rodriguez, also putting himself in across the line very shortly just a couple more corners to go and Eric Rodriguez is about to oh he puts himself with a, a 658. He goes uh, 13th. Now, one thing I didn't notice, but our tops. Oh, there goes Eddie Layton across the line. Goes P3 with a three or sorry, 636.675. What a what a spot for Eddie Layton as he goes to P3, puts Wyatt Roberts into P4, and Cody Wasson to P5. Trey Mistak overtakes. Matt Shack for P1, um, and that was a 634 even, just three tenths separating these drivers in P1 and 2. So that's going to be a pretty heated exchange going out onto the track once this race commences. We're about over with qualifying. We got two minutes left to go. Andrew Pickrell is one of the only drivers on the grid that is out on track that has actually not set a time. Miller the Raho goes ninth fastest with a uh, 640.899 crossing the line. And it looks like Andrew Pickerel's teammate of Cody Wassum is also about three seconds faster here. So we could be seeing something happen there. Andrew Kurostecki is one second faster on this portion of the track. But it, we have Andrew Pickerel. A driver who has not set a time and see where he's at on track. He's got a 6.10 in the dash right now. And you got to hope by the time he gets to that final couple quarters, that doesn't look like a 6.30. Maybe because once you get that final corner, you want to have a little bit extra. When you're crossing that line, he can put himself in a good spot. But can it put him in a good spot? He still has a little bit further to go. He's got to beat a 6.34. And I don't believe he's going to do that. That's four seconds right there that... He's just passing that. He's going to be looking for the 640s, I believe. As he's now at a 640, 641, 2. And there's the line, folks. Where's he at? Andrew Pickle crosses it. And he goes... Oh, buns. I don't think he uh, got a time from that one. That is truly unfortunate. Cody Wassum is still is actually four seconds faster he's four seconds faster into the final corner he goes across the line from p5 he goes to p1 he gets a 633.1 from cody wassum with no time left on the board there's one second and he gets it pole position for cody wassum oh my god What a drive from Cody Wassum at the final seconds is a full second faster than Trey Mistak and Matt Shack, who were just sitting on the top steps themselves at one point in qualifying. Now we're just going to be waiting for when this race starts. That was fantastic.
And I believe we should see some of these drivers on. Uh, Oh, that's one more driver. And Joshua Willis, before the time stops there, uh, he was still on his lap. He goes across the line to beat out uh, Eddie Layton for, with a 636.4 going to P4. And I wonder if that's everybody on track. Um, yeah, it should be. Take a look. Yep, I know this is something, but I think we're just waiting for the, uh, the old switch over to the race, and nobody should be on track or doing anything. And there's White Roberts. Uh, repping his anime waifu on the, uh, yep, just right there in the middle there is the, the waifu, and then on the little spoiler, I think it's also maybe her friend, but, um, you know, everyone's got their thing. And it's great for iRacing to give us these two pit lane cameras that really give you no good context on what's going on uh, as we wait for this race to start. Full seven minute countdown. Someone has not uh, finished up qualifying in some capacity. Or, you know, they're in the bathroom and they can't uh, get to the, the old grid just yet. But that's why we're waiting. Waiting indeed. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Almost like we should push this thing forward a little bit. I think we're waiting on White Roberts. It's the only driver that I think we're technically waiting on, I think. I mean, everyone else is grayed out. I think he has to do something here. But I can go over the grid uh, while we're waiting. Uh, we got Cody Wasson on pole. Trey Mistak in P1 or P2. Matt Shack in uh, P3, Joshua Willis P4, Eddie Layton P5, White Roberts in P6, Noah Hoskinson in P7, Kyle Aiken in P8, Miller, or car number 12, as I might call him, is P9. Andrew Korostecki is P10. Scott Neiman is P11. Steve McAllister is P12. Eric Rodriguez is P13. Tyler Anderson is P14. Angel Hernandez is P15. Paolo Langer is P16. Andre Alex Alexandre Rashis Richie Car number seven is in P sixteen or seventeen. I already forgot that one. Andrew Pickrell is in P eighteen or nineteen. Uh jo Joshua Grasso is in P nineteen or twenty. And then Greg Carroll is in P twenty or P twenty one. Well, that's anyone's but guess on what that what the entries there uh tell us. Could be 21. Yep, probably 21. It's a little confusing when the uh, the grid is out of order like that. We have 4 minutes and 30 seconds remaining to start this race. That should be starting now. One minute warning. And I think that one minute, oh, it might be like a one minute warning previously. 
Oh, and it looked like Andrew Pickerel had actually dropped, for, so that was probably why he didn't really get a good time to set in. A good time lap. And still we wait for something. And I'm sure in the voice chat they are determining why we're sitting here not on the go. It's 154 turns. Why did I say 130 turns? That is quite the feat. As they have pushed it over to the race, and we are ready to go. All cars are lined up. We get to go to the chopper. Or the blimp. Ooh. Now, the cameraman that was in charge of this camera really failed to get the nuance of what they were asked to do. Get a good view of the track so we can see these drivers. And that man will be losing his job after this race is over. But, you know, this cameraman did perfect. We're about to go underway here with a one minute time to the start of this race. And it may not even be that, but actually I speak too soon. Uh, back in the back of the grid here, it was a little change up here. Um, from Scott Neiman and C. McAllister in P12 and 13. Oh, ducks. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, Eric Rodriguez in P13, Paolo Langer in 14, Andrew Pickrell in 15, Joshua Grosso in 16, Angel Hernandez in 17, Ray Carroll is in 18, Tyler Anderson's in 19, Andre Rashish Rache, Rache? He's in P20, and then Nicholas Matcham is in P21. I think Hooked on Phonics really failed me on this uh, the start of this. We have five seconds remaining before this race starts. And we are going to be focusing on that liter. The start of this race, and then we'll switch it over to see what's going on. <clears throat> and this race is about to be underway. As the safety car is going to push us forward. And it looks like Trey Mistak is jumped the gun there on Cody Wassum, who is P1. So P1 gets to set us up first here. And I think that's the start already. No? That's not the start. It's just them catching up. Get where we're at on track. It's really exciting stuff go all the way to the start before it starts <laughs> oh man now we have one two drivers that did not start on the grid so they must be starting from the pit lane could be the case there and we are flag, off and Cody Watson has a big wide margin there already and he is way ahead in P1 and we have a battle already as Matt Shack has taken P2 from Trey Mistak and Joshua Willis in P3 and P4 Pushing. Matt Shaq's lost one position already. 
since we're on board with Andrew Korstecki from P10 down to P9. Now he's on the back of Kyle Aiken with Andrew Pickerel already gaining several positions off the start. Kyle Aiken still holding P8. With Eddie Layton and Noah Hodgkinson on the just neck and neck there. Not, not literally, but figuratively. These drivers that were in qualifying together, one right after the other. And it's just shown itself again as Noah's just gone on the back of Eddie Layton and just going to sit in that toe possibly. We do know that Noah was slightly faster than Eddie after the uh, after the the first uh, push lap that he did in qualifying. So I think we might see something happen during the race now, as Trey Mistak, who was P two, now sitting there. Oh, is Kyle Aiken is about to go side by side and then slots back in with Noah Hoskinson, and then goes Andrew Korsecki, who maybe looks down the inside. But thinks about it again and doesn't go for it. Trey Mistak, seeing what he can pick up here, and Josh Willis as well, as they're all sitting comfortably with the leader here. Uh, even more so, it looks like there's just a little gap that formed there from Matt Shack and uh, Trey Mistak. Ooh, and into that tight corner to go, and uh, it looks like just really sucked itself into the back end there on Andrew uh, Gorsecki. Nothing changed, though. It's interesting that the focus here is on... Uh, Ray Mistak and Scott Neiman and Angel Hernandez. Oh no, Angel Hernandez and Craig Carroll going side by side and Angel Hern Eric Rodriguez. What's that? Craig Carroll. Eric Rodriguez and Angel Hernandez were going side by side and Eric is on top. That is the blue car there and he overtakes him for position. Good to see these drivers in the back are uh, still racing. And it looks like they're not done racing as Angel Hernandez is down the inside line against Eric Rodriguez. And boom! Makes an overtake of his own and retakes the position from Eric Rodriguez. No positions changed just yet here. But we do have Matt Shack right there on the heels. He's four tenths behind Cody Wassum. Is he going to try to make a move? It's anybody's guess on when it's going to happen. Maybe on the straight. But as we've seen from Angel Hernandez and Eric Rodriguez, you don't need a straightaway to pass someone on this track. And that little gap has changed again. Tyler Anderson overtakes Craig Carroll for P16. Oh no. Joshua Willis, who was sitting comfortably with the uh, P1 through uh, 3. And not so much anymore. He's got White Roberts right there on the back. White Roberts going down. Oh, and it looked too soon to be true. White Roberts was going for a move, but then backed out of it, it seems. Over the hill they went. And Joshua Wilson, the front of a train, 
a gaggle of cars here. Go to the uh, second carousel, and there goes White Roberts just on the inside and overtakes him. And Joshua Willis loses three positions in one corner, maybe even four. And there goes Kyle Aiken. Andrew Korosecki's like, I'm going to stick on this guy. I don't need to be behind him either. As they're going to be going side by side down the straight, and who's going to take it? Looks like Josh Will slot himself in on the inside in the draft. Andrew Corsecki is ahead slightly. Oh, ahead fully. And drops right back into formation. And that is Joshua Willis from P4 to P9 in the span of a few corners. Andrew Corsecki overtakes Kyle Aiken. That just shows you what the Ferrari can do. Down straight line against the Porsche. And boom. That's two positions for Andrew Corsecki. Way to go, car number 46. What a move. And this race is definitely not over, but what a move. And Joshua Will is dropping into the pits himself. Oh no, he must something must have happened as Miller goes forward. Andrew Pickerel goes forward. Andrew Pickerel looks like Joshua Grosso trying to have a go at him as they go side by side through that corner, but he eventually just keeps it. Joshua Willis is going down the order now, and that is unfortunate. Something must have happened for that driver to be in the position that he is in, in the pit lane, this early. And right back into the lead here, we have Matt Shack. Uh, eight tenths back from uh, Cody Wassum. And Trey Mistack about six tenths back from uh, Matt Shack. Nicholas Matcham is into the pit lane. Or out of the pit lane. Right, Carroll is in the pit lane. Dean McAllister uh, getting close. Scott Neiman is back out on track, and so is Joshua Willis. Dropping back to P15 from that one, but he's got Eric Rodriguez just in front of him. Not too far in front of him, so he's still got a, some room to grow here and gain some more positions. And now we're going to take a look and see what on track is happening that might be divisive. As we go on board with car number 12, not really car number 12 anymore, car number 828. That's a long and lengthy Miller. In the green car. Uh, Eddie Layton in uh, P5. With a... Just about three drivers. I'd say most likely two drivers, actually. Andrew Corsecki is not as close as I thought he was. Not really a trained form there, but these three are really stuck together right now and just like in practice Noah didn't move far from the back of Eddie Layton during qualifying I don't think it's anyone's guess of whether or not he's going to be able to overtake him but you know an Audi and a Porsche I haven't seen that combo in a battle just yet to what am I saying everybody uh, went against that Audi of uh, Joshua Willis and in a corner actually the second carousel right at the top of the hill or the mountain as they say and so far it's been really clean every driver that has started this race is still in the fight they're on track no one's in the pits for repairs or consistent repairs I should say doesn't look like there's any damage to any of the cars. Another five laps left to go. It's anyone's guess. Andrew Pickle goes through on Miller in the green car. And that goes E9 for Andrew Pickle. Joshua Grasso overtakes him as well. For P10. Miller goes down two positions. And 
Matt Shack has closed the gap to Cody Wassum, as well as Trey Mistak also closing that gap even further. They are hot on the heels for P1, although nothing yet has come of their little bout, their battle. Cody Wassum did have a healthy gap of, you know, eight tenths, nine tenths, almost a full second. And it looks like he's they've dropped down about four tenths, but anyone's guess on whether or not this is gonna be a fight sooner rather than later, but I gotta say, some of these camera operators are definitely getting fired after this uh, race ends. It is unacceptable. And last laps do not really count too much. I don't think I've seen a driver with a clean lap in the top three at the moment. Um, their last lap did not count. Um, In and out of the carousel they go. Second one. Top of the mountain. Uh, he's on board with Eddie Layton. Seeing whether or not he makes anything happen. Uh, Miller and Joshua Grosso. That was a interesting one. Let's pull it back just slightly. Oh, there it is. Joshua Grosso. Take some of the metal off the sidewall. He is down a position, but not too shabby, as he is still in the fight. Eddie Layton and White Roberts switch positions down the straightaway, but Noah Hoskinson does not make a position as well. Looks to try to go at it, but slots back in at the end of this straight. And White Roberts down one. And uh, Cody Wassum, his last lap, finally a valid lap, goes uh, 6.35.2. And uh, Matt Shack and Trey Mistak, almost about the same lap, do a 6.35.1. So they're. Definitely one tenth difference between those drivers. Whoa! And there goes White Roberts. Locks up fully and slides off as he loses several positions, but he's backing up on track and giving enough space to some of the other drivers there. But he is from P5 down to P12, it looks like. Dropping down the order. And maybe even another driver might have a shot at him, but. That is unfortunate. One little lockup. Thankfully, he kept it out of the wall. Um, I think all measures to save the car were successful. And he'll continue to push. It's sounded like a Buxton right there. And if we're looking at the fastest man on track right now, that is Trey Mistak, who is just seven uh, hundredths faster than Matt Shack, But he has been in the toe on that last lap, giving him that a little bit of an extra edge. So Trey Mistak is going to hold that fastest lap for the time being, because we have four more laps to go. And Cody Wassum is not new to the Norch life. Practicing over 
40 to 60 hours in preparation for the 24 hour race. I don't think Matt is going to see another driver with that much experience on the track at this uh, juncture during this race. So he's definitely going to have to ask him on merit because I don't believe I've seen Cody Lawson slip up much in this car on this track. It's the intimate knowledge of all the corners, the 154 corners. And we do know that the uh, the Porsche not so well in the straight line when they're going on that back straight. Joshua Grasso just overtook Miller and gained a position. Oh, he hits the wall. They go side by side. Miller kind of lets that go. Oh, whoa, whoa! And we're gonna have to see what happened there, folks. Oh, no. And that is... Does he just lose it? Yeah! He just lost it. And that causes Trey to lose it. And both try to back up on track. Matt! Oh no. Loses a position. Two positions. Uh, almost three positions here. And that is unfortunate. Let's go a little bit faster here. Get back to the live feed. And we are back. Cody Wassum has a massive margin here. And he's also, I don't know, I think he's still got to serve a mandatory pit stop for fuel. And there goes Noel Hoskinson losing a little. Oh, no, as he touches the grass. And that puts him all out of shape. Matt, check. From P2 to P4. That is exactly what happens when you lose just a little bit of confidence or anything. Not even sure what happened there. He just lost the rear going into a fast corner like that. It's anybody's game there. As Eric Rodriguez passes Tyler Anderson for P14. And Trey Mistak, I think he lost the most out of that. He was trying to be a gentleman driver, a safe driver, and he left open. The, you know, he definitely hit his brakes to avoid the scenario of hitting Matt. But in doing so, he caused himself an incident, and that is unfortunate. Tyler Anderson loses another position to another driver. I'm sure not sure what that is. Uh, looks like his car is just fine. And Scott Neiman goes into P15. As Matt Shack looks to take over, take uh, Noah Hoskinson for P3. And back he goes. Very well done there from uh, Matt. And at the Rebattle some of these drivers as Noah Hodgkinson goes into the pits. And of course, Stecky is going to take get position here. So is Kyle Aiken. So is Andrew Pickerel, the P6 himself. And a couple other drivers. Trey Mistak down to P7 or up to P7. And the, the shakeup starts to happen. One driver goes in, serve that mandatory pit stop, and other drivers start to come back and get some positions gained as Josh Willis goes to P10 was p4 if you don't remember that at the start of the race i'm not sure what happened there 
Joshua Grasso also coming out of the pits from P9 to P12. So not a bad, bad loss there for himself. As uh, Noah Hodgkinson went to 11th. Cody Wassum here in P1 now has a 13 second gap to P2. Eddie Layton. That is so costly, as I was saying earlier, in regards to these drivers. One little mistake, and it, it's you weren't going to see it out of Cody Wassum, and he hasn't made a mistake just yet. He's been completely, totally focused. That's four laps done onto the fifth one, and he is just putting in but in experience, that's what that comes down to. Eddie Layton is now going to have to watch out for this driver of uh, Matt Shack, Shake Shack Matt, who is the provisional winner of the league for this season. Nicholas Matcham and Craig Carroll had a little bit of a bout, and uh, Nicholas Matcham's ahead in P17. Kyle Anderson goes into the pit lane, or he's exiting the pit lane right now, I should say. And Craig Carroll also gains a position. Tyler Anderson. Oh, but it looks like Tyler Anderson's going to get it back. From Craig Carroll. And is Trey Mistak. Is the car okay? The rear wing looks to be intact and straight. The front end looks a little damaged on the right front. As well as the hood. Definitely going to be stopping straight line speed there. And Matt Shack not as well affected as much there as he's half a second off of uh, Eddie Layton wants to retake P2 make quick work of it but I don't think Eddie Layton's gonna let him have that that easy as uh he was that was stuck behind uh Cody Wasson as well the driver who was, was holding good pace last lap wasn't so bad And we'll go on board. See if anything is going to shake up here. War Roberts to P8. Um, mm, not sure. Looks like there's a little shake up in the order, but it doesn't actually say. Uh, show it. And Eddie is holding strong at six tenths ahead of Matt. No forward progress has been made. Tyler Anderson overtakes Nicholas Matcham for P16. Joshua Grasso is in a race of his own right now with a good gap to his teammate Noah Hodgkinson. Also in the pits last lap. Joshua Willis overtook uh, Angel Hernandez there for P9. Wyatt Roberts has a 7.8 second gap to P7. Trey Mistak. And a 4 second gap behind him. Joshua Willis. Uh, Trey Mistak still hot on the heels of Andrew Pickrell. Is something going to happen between these two drivers? 
it was no fault of his own on that uh, incident. Train Mistack is gonna definitely try to capitalize. He hasn't made much. Pro! Whoa! And into the wall he goes. Following closely and not wanting to kill the driver ahead of him. When there is a, definitely a difference in speed exiting that corner. And just carry too much of it into the wall. Not going to be making a move anytime soon after that. But it wasn't a total failure. It's still in the same position. Didn't look like a lot of damage occurred there. Kyle Lake in a P5. Andrew Korstecki in P4. Just goes to show you consistency can play a factor, a major factor, in whether or not you're going to succeed in this race. And a lot of these drivers going into the pits, and there's three of them. Ooh, and it looks like Andrew Pickroll just, uh... Oh, and there goes Matt Shack who overshot his, uh, his spot there. Now, this is going to be the big one. We have Cody Wassum on an outlap. He was 13 seconds ahead of P2. Joshua Willis overcuts a lot of people right now. He hasn't gone to the pits. Oh, wait. You know, he went into the pits at the start of the race. So is it possible he has enough fuel for the end of the race? Who knows? But Matt Shack jumps back out. He's nine seconds behind Cody Wassum. That's a good enough gap. Um, I don't know if anything's going to shake up there. Kyle Aiken and Andrew Pickle are out again. Trey Mistak is out again. Uh, nothing changes just yet. Wyatt Roberts. Pete, whoa. Eddie Layton is off. What happened there? Oh, no. So Eddie Layton was P2. He goes back out onto the track. What the? Oh no, he hit the wall himself. The barrier there and almost killed a driver in that exchange. That is unfortunate. You hate to see it, folks. That's P2 out of this race. Exiting the pit lane. Yikes. Greg Carroll's about to go through. Take position there for P16. Joshua Willis is 5 seconds back. 4.7 seconds back from Cody Wassum. Is it? Whoa! And we have another driver who just made a fatal error on... Oh, no. Andrew Pickrell and him were battling for P5. Just too much speed, too much speed, and there's not much you can do there. Andrew Pickrell gets by, but you definitely see he has a little bit of damage from that front end con contact. And hope that doesn't mess up his race either. Who knows just yet? Is that White Roberts catching him quickly? Yeah, it is. Oh, no. So down goes Pickrell. Oh, gosh. That little contact destroyed his tire if you can't see this folks maybe i could go right his tire is not pointed that direction on purpose it is definitely canted inward slightly enough that that's gonna be a suspension issue for sure it's far too cut inward that's that right front that's definitely like a lazy eye almost. I mean, that thing is not with the other tires right now. That is unfortunate. And that was that contact with Kyle Aiken, who's also out of this race. And the mistakes are 
just just happening and that's all it's coming down to is just mistakes at the end of this race with two laps to go they just they mounted up Matt Shaq's gonna have to see if he can't come back on uh, Joshua Willis but they have the same actually Joshua Willis's last lap was faster than Matt Shaq uh so he's 1.2 seconds back. I don't know if he's going to be able to make up that time. And there goes Miller uh, in the green car. My Lamborghini. Would damage himself, but not damage that's like this. You can just see roughly that it's right there. Oh, no. There goes Eric Rodriguez. And that is just... Failure there. Oh no. Oh no. What did... In the name of commentator cursing, did I... Help this along? Cody Wassum was P1... Oh, no. In contact with par four, number 44, and that is Noah Hodgkinson, and that kills Cody Wassum. Just a rejoin that position on track. Yeah, that is... He's holding it together, but from... I was saying... Oh, no. That's another... That's probably him going to the pits for that trade mistake. Passes by Cody Wassum. And Cody Wassum from P1. Definitely going down the order. And the, the mistakes are finally upon us with, I believe, two laps to go, actually. Three? Two, three? Two, three laps to go. I thought it was going to be one-ish. 1.5. Joshua Willis is leading this race, but can he make it to the end with no uh, pit stop? He took a pit stop on the first lap. Was that his intention to just fuel totally and see if he can't make it to the end of this race with that much fuel? I don't know what the regs are. No, he goes into the pit lane, and there goes Matt Shack now leading this race. Who started P... Three and even went down the order a little bit. Noah Hoskinson into P2. Joshua Willis still in the pit lane. Andrew Korostecki takes P3. Joshua Willis still in the pit lane. Trey Mistek overtakes him for P4. Joshua Willis is coming out of the pit lane. White Roberts is down the star trait finish. He goes, but where's Joshua Willis? Just ahead for P5 for Josh. Gets that extra fuel for the splash and dash for this end of the race. They are on lap six. And that is unfortunate for these drivers. And it looks like Andrew Pickrell, who's sitting in P8, is continuing to race. But that tire can is possibly holding him up just slightly. Uh... It looks like it is enough to be an issue, but not enough to go into the pits. That just says something about ability to drive the car there. That tire is definitely not straight. And the sleeper of Andrew Course Decky here from P10 to P4. Consistency is key. Noah Hoskinson as well as from P7 to P3. And just one little mistake, which I said was not going to come out of uh, Cody Wasserman. And just 
Really set him back. Fatal mistake. You no, know, Cody Wasm is back out on track, and it looks like his car is all repaired. Just ahead of Nicholas Matcham, who's just going to be crossing the Star Trek finish. And that is a really cool livery. The Frosted Flakes livery. Scott Neiman with a... Uh, definitely a gap of 30 seconds to Andrew Pickerel. Steve McAllister crosses... As is uh, Craig Carroll, and Craig Carroll's moving a little slowly here. Oh no, what's happening here? The car is not a straight. That is a not straight car. And into P10, Cody Wassum goes. Uh, Craig Carroll nursing this Lambo to the finish line and into the pits. Tyler Anderson is also in the pit lane. Steve McAllister in the pit lane. Woo! Starting with 323. Eric Rodriguez. Oh, unfortunate. Miller sitting in P7. Wyatt Roberts in P6. Joshua Willis in P5. Back to Matt Shack here in P1. And there was a strong overcut by uh, Joshua Willis, who was E4 at the start of the race. Um, and, you know, it just went a little longer. He's already taken a pit stop for some damage that occurred. Uh, <clears throat> which put him back in the back of the grid, really. But staying out a couple laps extra really cemented his ability to just pop back in for a quick splash and not lose too much position over it. I mean, only being one, down one position from the start of this race to P5 is actually really good. All things considered from what transpired on the track. As Wyatt Roberts is uh, now catching... Joshua Willis, who was a full second faster last lap. I'm not sure why he's slipping right now. Tires might be a little too hot, might have uh, gone off somewhere, but he definitely seems to be nursing his car just a little bit. That's what allowed White Roberts to catch up in the first place. And speed is key here. And whoa, he ate a lot of that curbing there. I don't know if that's a good thing or not in a Porsche, but Wyatt is unfazed by that as they're at the top of the mountain on that second carousel. In a Porsche, pass an Audi down the straightaway itself we will see white is half a second off and that gap is closing 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 is it possible or is he just gonna have to slot in behind and wait for a corner it doesn't look like he's gaining anything from being inside the draft of that audi neither car making a change down this long and windy section towards the end there's windy and they go almost side by side he was one tenth off he gained the necessary time but not the ability to pass 
buy him out of the draft. Didn't even try. And that is a spin from White Roberts. We saw one before. And he's backing up and definitely staying out of the racing lines. Allows him to keep going. But those rears are definitely going to be a little hot for his taste. As Miller in car number 12. Uh, got about a 10 second gap to him. So he's not have to worry too much about that driver just yet. Andrew Korostecki in P3 now has to contend with Trey Mistak, who had a little bit of a mistake, pun intended, on that one. And it brought him back. Not his mistake, but a mistake in front of him caused him to uh, do, you know, car crash avoidance. And that sometimes happens in a motor race. And Matt Shack, I didn't think it was going to be possible two laps ago, but it looks like he's going to be taking P1 uh, off the merits of other drivers who didn't keep it clean. Just dropped out of the, the contention there. Things changed. But is Andrew going to fight have? Fight hard for this uh, for this position. You know, it's a Lamborghini versus a Ferrari. I'm not sure where the uh, the BOP is right now on these cars, but I definitely can't beat a Ferrari down the straight line. I mean, some cars can, but can a Lambo? I don't know personally that information. But Andrew Corsecki is a full one point. Two seconds faster than his last lap, and Ray Mistak was he's actually up on his last time by one second. But he did a uh a 634 2 on the last lap. Andrew Korseki did a 639. So not too good there on the the pace difference of these drivers. Definitely gonna hope that he can keep this position. Trey Mistak definitely has pace to uh, make a move. When is he going to make that move? And is it now? Add a little bit of a look. Pace difference here is just insanity. It's one tenth separating these drivers. One small maneuver wrong, and Trey is into a wall if he wants to avoid ramming into the back of Andrew Korostecki. We've seen it happen once. See, twice now. It's two times he had to avoid a driver in front of him while he's carrying some speed into an apex. One was right here, actually. Close right there. Maybe a couple other turns. Well ahead. Still not losing a lot of time here to these corners. Just two tenths, maybe three. I want like two. The tray is going to make something happen. Very shortly. And Andrew Korostecki is 2.5 seconds faster than his last lap. Actually evening out where he would have been close to Trey Mistak, but just barely. Still a little... Needs to cut that even to three. He's now at 2.7 tenths faster. And Trey Mistak had 
it equals out almost to a, a lap of uh, 634.2. That was uh, Trey Mistak's last lap, and that's still slightly uh, slower than that last lap. And Trey is one-tenth faster on this lap. Still putting in a really impressive drive out of Trey Mistak here in P4. Was P2 at the start of this race. Into the second carousel they went and gone. This was a one where he had that little slip up into that wall. See some of those tire trails. It's a lot of drivers have had this little slip up in that wall. Which car will reign supreme down the straights as they're about to go? Is it Trey? Spence is palpable. They're separated by zero tenths. He goes down the inside line on this corner, but the outside line for the next corner. Is he going to be able to stay ahead of him? Yes, he is. It looks like they're about neck and neck, though. Is he actually fully along? He isn't. And there goes Andrew Korostecki dropping the back there. That overtake by Trey Mistak for P3. And when he crosses the line, Andrew Korostecki had a 637.4 and Trey Mistak had a 636.4. So separated by a full second, Andrew Korostecki went faster. What is Matt Shack doing there as he fully goes off? And Noah Hawkins in and fully goes off and fully! What is happening from these drivers as they both... Oh, the, the race is over, folks. I didn't even see that there. I was really scared for a second. We got Matt Shack. This race is over. That is, didn't see with the checkered flag. Just scare the commentator here. Matt Shack hits P1. Noah Hoskins in P2. Trey Mistak at P3 across the line. That actually makes that a little bit uh, underwhelming. That didn't sell that more down the... That is it. Josh Willis is able to take P5. Wyatt Roberts at P6. Miller, uh, P7. Andrew Pickrell... Looks to be crossing the line in P8. Scott Neiman in P9. Um, definitely no one around him. Cody Wassum, also another driver with nobody really around him, but he's going to be able to round that out in, in P, uh, to P10. Uh, Nicholas Matcham, another driver who's got a big gap between him and his other rivals. If he keeps it on track, he's going to be P11. Eddie Layton will definitely be P12. Uh, Steve McAllister in P13. And Andrew, Eric Rodriguez in P14, Craig Carroll in P15, and it looks like Joshua Grasso is still in the pits as um, Wyatt Roberts is going around the track to celebrate. Fully committed to that. And, uh, yeah, it's a good celebration on that driver. And there is. Cody Wassum, another driver that still has yet to cross the line, but is going to take his spot. After Craig Carroll, it goes Tyler Anderson in P16, and Kyle Aiken in 17, Joshua Grasso in P18, and Angel Hernandez in P19. But the race isn't over for some. And it's an unfortunate break there for uh, Cody Wassum leading the race the entire time, and then off on his own but a p10 finish nonetheless and nicholas matcham also coming close to finishing this race it's two turns one turn and that is p11 and then the slow roll for uh eddie layton who was driving masterfully and, you know, accidents happen. But that's the season finale, folks. 
for the uh, this championship of the GT3 championship here at Broken Wings Racing League. And that is round seven. Fully done. And the F4 series is still going to be on the last races this Tuesday. Not going to be streaming it, unfortunately, but if you wanted to take a gander at that or join the league, join the races, you don't have to fully commit to every race. Appreciate it if you do, but you can jump in where you know you can fit it into your schedule as Steve McAllister is crossing the line as one of the final drivers to get his position. E13. And that is all said and wrapped up. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next season. Uh...